let's talk about um, the these uh, this story from Chris Hedges or this piece from Chris Hedges and. Um, also, this uh, piece from David Graeber. And let me also just say that we're going to obviously post a link uh, at majority.fm to the OWS bus.tumblr site so uh, people can get a sense. You're going next to Ithaca, you said, right? Yes, we'll be in Ithaca through Sunday. Okay, so people can get a sense of where the, uh, the bus is going so that um, you can meet up with it if you're in the area. But l- you, you you tweeted out just I guess before the show that there's a lot of conversation about David Graeber's uh, response to Chris Hedges' piece about Black Bach, uh, Block being a um, a cancer within Occupy Wall Street. Um, what what are people saying? What is your feelings about this? Well, I I mean I think. Most people thought his his article is frankly ludicrous, and that it almost seems like he doesn't understand what the so-called black block block is about. I mean, it's it's a tactic, not even a group of people. So it's almost like calling you know terrorists as if that they all have a similar ideology. It doesn't even make sense. And there are definitely people on this trip, you know, that I'm traveling with now that consider themselves anarchists in the you know strictest sense. And they've definitely, I mean, the whole issue with Oakland and violence and black bloc that's all been thrown around, um, it, it's definitely very contentious. And I think the misnomer about it is that, um, that there's really any specific line that this movement takes in terms of the, the tactics. I mean, the idea behind being horizontal is that you open up the possibility to anything happening. And so that doesn't mean that we necessarily prefer violence, but at the same token, to just completely take it off the table or even what the definition of violence is, because, again, we're talking about, you know, property destruction maybe or or in some cases um, challenging laws that we feel are not even really just anyway. So um, to me, it's more about understanding that diversity of tactics is about you know, the openness of this movement and not about enforcing specific ideas behind tactics. And so for now, it's been nonviolent. But to say going forward that that's the only thing that we would ever use, I have no idea what this, what shape this movement's going to take. And I'm sure there will be elements of all these things. And, and so I think it really did a disservice. I mean, I think people feel like, in a sense, by Chris Hedges saying, this is tearing apart the movement. What he's actually done is tear apart the movement, or in a sense, um, do what he's claiming others are doing. And and that's been uh, it's been contentious, but I think it's a good thing to get out there. I guess, but I, I really don't know exactly what caused Hedges to sort of branch out on that uh, that avenue. I mean, my sense was that, um, and and I think we had spoken about this last week that. At a time where we are in a, um, a sort of a the activity of Occupy Wall Street is um, less uh, is more under the radar, I should say, in general. That it uh, the weather and um, there is sort of a we're in a sort of a um, a preface uh, time period right now uh, where we are you know there's anticipation of the spring. I think. The existence of people who are using black block tactics uh, seems larger uh, than it did at a time when there was simply a lot more people around. And so there's a sense, I think, by people who are uh, on the periphery or, um, you know, are sort of spending a lot of their time talking to the reactions of other people that there's a concern that this is alienating. Uh, I think that concern is overstated uh, to a certain extent um, because, like I say, it doesn't, really, it doesn't really matter what people's perceptions are now. I think, um, you know, or I should say, it doesn't matter what people's perceptions are now as a, um, that they can't be dispelled with 15,000 people, you know, marching up Broadway or something. Um, or, you know, uh, 100,000 people going on strike across the country. Those are all things that can certainly make people forget about 
uh, a couple of uh, black block uh, tactics that were, you know, employed in February uh, of this year. So it's it's interesting to see. I think the most the 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 part of Graber's uh, article that stuck out at me was this part. Um, he was talking about um, diversity tactics is not a black block idea. The original GA in Tompkins Square Park that planned the original occupation, if I remember, adopted the principle of diversity of tactics. At the same time, we also uh, concurred that a Gandhian approach would be the best way to go. This is not a contradiction. Diversity of tactics means leaving such matters up to the individual conscience rather than imposing a code on, anyway, on anyone. Partly this is because imposing such a code invariably backfires, uh, and the results are usually disastrous. After the fiasco in Seattle, we watched some activists actively turn over, turning others over to the police. We quickly decided we needed to ensure this never happened again. What we found, we declared, quote, we shall all be in solidarity with another. We will not turn in fellow protesters to the police. We will treat you as brothers and sisters, but we expect you to do the same to us. Then those who might be disposed to more militant tactics will act in solidarity as well, either by not engaging in militant actions for fear they are in danger others, or in doing so that ways the ways that run the least risk of endangering fellow activists. So from Graeber's perspective, it seems to me that the key is for people who are engaging in black bloc activities to be doing so in such a way that they are not integrated with the larger protests that are actually happening so that others may be endangered by it. Well, I guess I would counter that to say that, you know, they're on this bus trip with us. So the idea that somehow they don't want to be a part of the movement and aren't interested in other perspectives is just patently false. Well, no, no, no. And I think you're, mis- you're misinterpreting. Well, you're, you're addressing hedges. And I'm talking, right. about, I'm talking about Graeber saying that it's important for people who are using those tactics to use those tactics in a way that uh, makes it clear is far enough away from what is going on, at least physically, uh, with other protesters so as to not endanger them. I mean, he's arguing that those black bloc tactics are specifically uh, utilized to protect the rest of the movement because that way you can identify who is going to be involved in potentially more militant activity and stay away from them. Correct. You know, and that's always been, I mean, my experience throughout Occupy Wall Street is that literally every direct action, there are always choices to be made, and they're explicitly made, um, given to people up front, that if you want to be in high risk of getting arrested, this is what we're going to do. If you want to be in low risk, you know, you want no risk, this is where you stay. And so, you know, it's more about just understanding that as protesters all, we have a common enemy, and it's much more effective to simply focus your energy against that enemy and not internally and allow this to happen. I mean, part of it, I think, is that it's sort of scary for people that are used to old constructs to just allow something to happen and to not have control of exactly every single person and what they're going to do. And at the same time, that's really what's made this movement so effective. And, you know, I think there will always be people trying different avenues and different tactics simultaneously. I think that's been the case uh, throughout history. But I really think that in a lot of ways right now, the most effective actions have been totally, you know, outside the system in every way. And, you know, you can call it violence if you want, but on another term, you think of what the, you know, the SOPA blackout, and in a sense, that was sort of taking these kind of militant you know, black block tactics to the Internet. And they literally shut down sites or people participated in something that, you know, if it were physical and in the world, they would have probably considered that violent. Well, no, wait a second. Let let me ask you this, though. Um, Okay. Do you think there is a uh, a point that if, um, and I'm not saying that Hedges is saying this, because I I thought his piece was, I I, I couldn't quite make it from, make it out from this. But um, from a tactical perspective, if... If I was to present to you, and I, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm, this is completely hypothetical, but if I was to say to you, 
Uh, I have evidence uh, that um, shows that these tactics are scaring people away from joining up with protesters at Occupy Wall Street. I don't have that evidence. I'm not even sure that I think anecdotally, anecdotally that's happening or I buy into it. But what's your response if I was to say, if I was to say the, you, that, uh, what is your response to the idea that it might be keeping people away because it's scaring them as to the nature of Occupy Wall Street? Um, I would say that, you know, the, the scare tactics are really only coming from people like Chris Hedges. I think that if you are involved in these actions in person, you find that there really isn't any kind of a threat in any way. I mean, it's sort of the same as Zuccotti Park. There were always these, you know, rumors that there were terrible things going on there, and then you would show up and realize, although you could find those kind of things if you were really looking for them, it was very easy to stay away from them at the same time and to make the experience what you wanted to make it. So, um, you know, I really have never felt in any instance, and I've been out there, you know, on the streets now for almost five months, that I was ever swept in a, into a scenario where I'm in the middle of a black block against my will or, you know, have ever felt like I haven't personally been able to make decisions virtually in every instance. So um, I just don't think it's true. I, I think that, you know, in very, very um, select instances, primarily in Oakland, something may have happened that, have been, that has been different. But to characterize the entire movement, I just I haven't seen it at all. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Jeff Smith, he's on the bus, the Occupy Wall Street bus, uh, driving through upstate New York, heading to Ithaca, and you can go to owsbus.tumblr for more information. We have a link uh, at majority.fm. Jeff, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll talk to you next week.